Yo yeah, guys, Gary AK Hopeless back again. In this video I am going to show off how I painted this rather out of focus rat. Uh, this is Slygot, a large brown rat from the tabletop game Burrows and Badgers, which is this. Um, I've never actually played the game, I just really like painting the models, but I always feel it's, uh, you know, it's good to have the the rule books, just in case I ever do decide to actually play something. Um, yeah, links will be down below. No affiliate links. Uh, it's just a straight up link to the shop where you can buy these direct from uh, Oathsworn, which is all good. As it's January, it's 2022, it's a new month, a new year. I figured this year I would try and do new things when I'm painting, and in this particular model, or with this model, I decided to try oil paints for the first time. Uh, mixed results, you'll see later on, but uh, uh, paints used in this video, mainly Monument Hobbies Pro Acryl, a little bit of contrast, and uh, these, Windsor & Newton oil colours. So uh, yeah, let's see how this goes. Well I know how it goes because it's fully painted and I've just shown it to you, so uh, this is how I did it. Enjoy. So. This is the 12th or 13th painting video I've done for the Burrows and Badgers series. I do quite like the models. Um, and uh, when I saw these ones had been released, it was uh, part of a set that was supposed to be at a convention, but obviously with the way things are in the world, that didn't happen. So yeah, here we go. Skin was tan flesh from Proaquil. Looks quite nice. I blocked in the hands, the feet, the eyes, the inner ears, just basically everywhere that, you know, skin would be showing mainly. I think my goals for 2022 are basically to improve my painting, which I think is probably everyone's main goal. Um, yeah, and just just be happier. Having some issues at the minute, but uh, working through them. Uh, Light Umber was for the fur one of the very traditional brown rat. And uh, yeah, I think that looks alright. Going over the fur with Basil Canum Grey, heavily mixed down with some contrast medium thinners, I wanted to use that as a bit of a wash for this, the, uh, the tail and the fur, which I think came out quite nicely. I have sort of, re I'm starting to rely more on contrast paints for uh, more, more like washes at the minute. Trying not to rely on them for literally everything. Magos purple with more thinners to sort of bring out some detail in the flesh. It's a bit subtle. Maybe should have gone a little bit darker, or well, not so much thinner, but the uh, effect came out quite well. If I did one thing differently, it would definitely be not using so many. Uh, Thinners. And then I wanted to actually have some eyes and teeth that I was proud of, so uh, this took a very long time to get the nerve to do the eyes and teeth with ivory. And um, yeah, I didn't make a complete hash of it. To be fair, I didn't have to go over and fix anything, so that's that's always a bonus. Moving on to uh, basically the rest of him. I I don't really attack things with a set idea for colour schemes. I like to look at the models and try and work out how they... I, I, don't, I, hate, I hate using the phrase how the model talks to me, but basically to me, this character looks... Well, he doesn't look entirely good and he doesn't look entirely evil, sort of like a nice chaotic neutral if you want to go for D&D stuff. So I wanted his armour and his clothing to sort of uh, represent that. So blue black for the uh, undershirt and burnt orange for the trousers for some reason. I can't quite remember why. I think it came out alright. Uh, the cloak. the fair, I wasn't quite sure what animal I was going with on the back but uh, I figured golden brown would be a, a good starting point. And yeah, 
as a starting point, looks all right. Going for the inner section of his cloak, I went with burnt red. For some reason, I've always pictured the inside of cloaks as uh, red. Could just be me, but I think uh, it always looks good. When the cloak was dry, I went over with Agarus Dunes. It's not as dark as, uh, oh, was it Snakebite Leather or Gorgrunter Brown? Um, I tend to use uh, this uh, Agarus for uh, basing normally, but I uh, wanted to do something different. For the axe handle, Dark Umber. No reason. It was just uh, the most woody colour I could see in the uh, Pro Aqual range. And then for the axe head and chainmail, uh, silver. Nice bright silver that I had planned to uh, age up a little bit a bit later on. Moving on to the rest of the armor pieces, I went with Dark Silver, and yeah, I liked it when I was painting it, and then when I finished, you can literally see the moment I decided I didn't like it. The metal bit, the, the armor plates are too dark, so I'm going to definitely redo them again. There it is. So I went back over certain parts of the armour with Vallejo's Dark Gloss Surface Primer, and when that was dry, I went over with Green Stuff World's Colour Shift Metal Darth Blue. So still dark, but a little bit of colour thrown in. And it says you can do these with uh, the Colour Shift paints with brushes or airbrushes. We'd gotten to this point, I really didn't fancy masking everything off, so uh, tried it out with a brush. I think it came out alright, I did have to do a couple of coats just to even out the... Even, yeah, even it all out a bit. And then once it dried, I felt the effect quite, uh, quite suits him now. Of course, doing this bit, I realised I'd forgotten a couple of extra bits, but uh, it's alright, it'll all be touched up in a minute. For the bits that I did not do with the blue, uh, I went over with bronze. Pro Acryl. A nice a yeah, to me that looks the, the Pro Acryl bronze looks like a really nice aged metal. And I think it works really well with the colours I've chosen. As you can tell. That's all the metal bits sorted out all good. So this is the first attempt I had at using oil washes. I, I decided to try and uh, spruce up the uh, the cape, the cloak, whatever you want to call it, a little bit more. But um, yeah, in hindsight, I think the colour I chose was too close to uh, how it came with Agros Dunes. And then I went over the silver bits with uh, ivory black, with an ivory black oil wash, which I think came out a lot better. I actually think that aged uh, that that really added to the aged metal effect. Obviously, mineral spirit, yeah, mineral spirits to try and clean up the, and I'm doing air quotes here, washes, the oil paints. You can see it coming off on the uh, the cotton bud, but um, yeah, I either chose a colour that was too similar to what had been put down, or I just didn't leave it long enough. So yeah, that didn't look awful. So no harm done. The black definitely worked a lot better. 
I think that really added to the uh, the bronze armour. But learning experiences, that's what all this is. Let's compare how uh, this video, or how this section of oil paints goes with, you know, video I do later in the year. Hopefully there will be, there'll be, there'll be improvements. Moving on to the rocks on his little basey bit, uh, just a nice, simple, bright, neutral grey. I was planning on going over quite a lot of this with some texture stuff. And there he is, actually attached to the base. Grabbing my fateful pot of AK Interactive's Terrain Diorama Dark Earth and my absolutely disgusting looking texture thing from uh, Games Workshop. I made sure to cover the, uh, the, the the metal plate and some rocks that I'd stuck down. Nice bit of slate work there, get getting scenics. But yeah, a little bit messy in places, but I did try and tidy this up. And that's it all dry. You can see I've tried to make the rocks not look like they've just been stuck in. Covered up sections, made it look like they're being exposed from beneath or above. Lots of people walking around there. And then I gave those a little covering of Basilicanum Grey, just to tie it all together. Went in to finish off the base, got my PVA glue, some more Geek Gaming Scenics base ready stuff. This is the Scrublands. Forgot how dusty this stuff makes the bases, so uh, I did clean it all off in a minute. And when that dried, got super glue and some army painter tufts I got in a previous model box and basically scattered those around. And there he is, Sly got the large brown rat. Looking equally menacing and, you know, has the chance to be a hero if you wanted him to be. I did enjoy painting this. I always loved painting the Burrows and Badgers mini. But yeah, he's all fun. Just realised that one of the tufts hasn't quite stuck down properly, so I will sort that out in a bit. Things I do differently, like I said, I would try the oil paint slash wash out again, maybe a slightly different or darker colour. Maybe leave it on for a bit longer as well, just to see if that has any more of an effect. But no, he was fun to paint. Love that little rat. That's about it. What would you guys have done differently? Do you like the rat? Do you like painting and and uh, you like painting like human-sized animals? Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Did you like the painting? Did you like the video? Think it's a load of rubbish? Let me know. If you want to see more stuff like this, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. It does help out, and there will be more stuff like this coming up soon. So until the next video, as always, I am Gary, aka Hopeless. Thank you so much for watching, and until then, see ya.